My grandfather and great-grandfather started Junction Auto in 1931. If you want to pay more, that's your business. If you want to pay less, that's my business. It certainly has been in our consultation with our client his stated desire to waive the presentment of any evidence in mitigation. And uh, consistent with the comments both Mr. Hummels and I made at the first phase of the proceeding, uh, I could certainly speak from my own professional judgment and opinion that Mr. Edwards is competent to engage in a rational decision uh, informed by the variables we have taught him regarding the legal landscape of the mitigation hearing of the capital trial. And likewise, you reiterate uh, your statement about uh, my concern about ineffective assistance of counsel. This may not be your decision, but you're referring to your client as that. Yes, Your Honor. We uh, think both Mr. Reynolds and I both uh, feel bound by the stated wishes of a competent client when it comes to a matter that is within the client's control. And it is our judgment as uh, lawyers that, in fact, the client controls whether or not to present mitigation. We can't do that over his stated wishes. Uh, we have discussed with him what mitigation is out there. We have acquainted ourselves adequately with the scope and depth of mitigation uh, that would be available had this been a contested fight, whether before a tribunal or a jury trial. Um, but we are bound, and I think the Ohio Supreme Court jurisprudence, if nothing else, starting with State v. Ashworth, makes it clear that it client this tribunal would deem competent to waive cannot be led by the hand by some lawyer and forced to do that which he does not choose to do. And as you were asked earlier, and you've touched on this, is it, or are you satisfied that Mr. Edwards' determination not to present any mitigation evidence or make a mitigating statement is a rational decision on his part of that he's not suffering any psychiatric or psychological illness or abnormality that would pre prevent that being a rational decision? I am. In my judgment as a lawyer, he is not mentally incompetent. Rather, he is competent, and he has, in discussing this decision with me, satisfied me that with assuming his predicates, assuming his values and his axioms built thereupon, he is making a rational decision to waive or give up the right to present. It's not the decision I would normally advise a client to undertake, but because he's competent, he's one. I stand here mute, muted by his decision. Mr. Edwards. Yes. So you're perfectly clear about this. Yes. If you do not present any mitigating evidence, this panel more than likely give you the death penalty. You still have to consider the evidence. But do you understand that? Yes. I know that you've discussed this with your attorneys at length. You realize what's happening. But do you feel you need any more time to make that decision regarding the presentation of the No, sir. I beg this court on Danny's behalf, please do not give him the death sentence. We have consulted amongst ourselves. It is the sentence of this court that in regards to count one of the indictment, aggravated murder, that you be sentenced to death by lethal injection. In regards to count two, you are sentenced to 10 to 25 years of incarceration in the state prison.